assessing the skull and face, eye structure and visual, ears and hearing, nose and sinuses, mouth and oropharynx, and the neck of the client. First is to assess the skull and face of the client. Assessing the skull and face is an inspection and palpation of the skull and face and also the measuring of skull circumference in which presence of division and changes of the facial shape may indicate a disorder or a certain condition. The first thing we do is to inquire if the client has any history of the following lumps or bumps, itching or dandruff, loss of consciousness, dizziness, seizures, headaches, facial pain or injury. Good day sir, I am Jaira Amupang, your student nurse. Now I am going to assess your skull and face. But before that, I will verify if you have this following. Do you have any lumps or bumps? No. Do you have any itching, scaling, or dandruff? No. Do you experience loss of consciousness or dizziness? No. How, how about seizures or facial pain or any injury? No. Okay, sir, thank you. If the client experienced those, ascertain the following. When and how the lumps occurred? length of time, any other problem existed, any known cause of any problem, and the associated symptoms, treatment, and recurrence. But, before doing the inspection and palpation, we need to do the gloving for us to prevent any acquiring of the infection. Inspect the skull for the size, shape, and symmetry using a measuring tape. And, palpate the skull for noodles or measures on depressions. Use a, use a gentle rotating motion with the fingertips. Begin with the front and palpate down to the midline, then palpate each side of the head. And also, Inspect for the facial features of the client. Inspect also the eyes for edema and hollowness. Note symmetry of the facial movements. Ask the client to elevate the eyebrow front or lower, the, lower down the eyebrows. Close the eyes tightly, puff the cheeks and smile and show the teeth. Sir, can you please lower down your eyebrow or and close tightly your eyes? And can you please remove your mask for me to check your other facial features? Can you show me your teeth? Okay, thank you. After the procedure, document findings in the client's record. Now, we will proceed to assessing the eye structure and visual acuity of the client. Assessing the eye structure and visual acuity of is an examination of the eye that includes the external eye structure, visual perception, ocular, ocular movement, and visual fields. Assessment of vision provides important information about the client's ability to interact with the environment and perform activities of daily living. The first thing we do is to inquire if the client does any of the following family history of diabetes, hypertension, or blood dyscrasia, eye disease, injury, or surgery, last visit to an ophthalmologist, current use of eye medication, use of contact lenses or eyeglasses, hygienic practices for corrective lenses, and current symptoms of eye problem. So, sir, before we're well, going to start the procedure. I need you to verify if do you have any of the following. Do you have any family history of diabetes, hypertension, and blood dyscrasia? No. How about eye disease, injury, or surgery? No. Do you have any visit to an ophthalmologist or the last visit you have? No. Do you have any use of medication currently? No. No. Use of contact lenses or eyeglasses. No. Do you have any? Do you have seen any symptoms of eye problem? 
No. Okay, sir. Thank you. After taking the history of the client, we will now going to assess the external eye structure, inspect for the eyebrows for hair distribution and alignment, and for the skin quality and movement, inspect also the eyelashes for evidence of distribution and direction of the curl. Inspect the vulvar conjunctiva of her color, texture, and the presence of lesions. Inspect the palpebral conjunctiva by averting the lids. Avert the upper lids if a problem is suspected. Ask the client to look down while keeping the eyelids slightly open. Gently grasp the client's eyeglasses with thumb and forefinger. Pull the lashes gently downward while, ho while holding the eyelashes. Hold the margin of the everted lid or eyelashes against the ridge of the upper bony or with orbit with the applicator, stick, or your thumb. Inspect the conjunctiva color structure, lesions, and foreign bodies. Inspect and palpate the lacrimal gland. Use the tip of your index finger, palpate the lacrimal gland, and observe for edema between the lower lid and the nose. Inspect also and palpate the lacrimal sac and nos lacrimal duct. Observe for evidence of increased tearing. Using the tip of your index finger, palpate inside the lower orbital, orbital rim near the inner canthus. And now, we will going to inspect the cornea for clarity and texture. Ask the client to look straight ahead and hold the pin light at an oblique angle to the eye and move the light up slowly across the corneal surface. So, assuming that this is our pen light, sir, can you please look straight ahead? Okay, sir. Thank you. And now, we will going to perform the corneal sensitivity reflex test to determine the function of the fifth trigeminal cranial nerve. Ask the client to keep both eyes open and look straight ahead. Approach from behind and beside the client and lightly touch the cornea with the corner of the ghost. So, sir, can you please look straight ahead and open your eyes and after that inspect the anterior chamber for transparency and depth Use the same oblique lighting used when testing the cornea. And now, we will going to inspect the pupils for color, shape, and symmetry of size. Assess each pupil's direct and consensual reaction to light in a partially darkened room. Ask the client to look straight ahead using a pen light and approaching from the side, shine a light on the pupil. Observe the response and shine the light on the pupil again and observe the response of the other pupil. The same procedure on the other side of the pupil. Now, we will going to assess each pupil's reaction to accommodation. Hold an object about 10 cm from the client's nose. Ask the client to look first at the top of the object and then at the distant object behind the pen light. 
Alternate the gaze between the near and the far objects. Then observe the pupil's response. Sir, please look at this face and then behind the pen light. And next, move the pen light or pencil towards the client's nose. The pupils should converge. To re record normal assessment of the pupils, use the abbreviation PERLA. Now, in this procedure, we will going to assess the client's visual field, which is to assess the peripheral visual fields of the client. Have the client sit directly facing you at a distance 60 to 90 cm. Ask the client to cover right eye with a card and look directly at your nose. So sir, please use this card to cover your eyes. Cover and close your eyes directly opposite to the client's covered eye and look directly at the client's nose. Hold an object in your fingers, extend your arm, and move the object into the visual fields from the various points in the periphery. So sir, cover your eyes with the card and look directly to my nose. Sir, did the object move? Yes. And to the other side. <laughs> Sir, did you see the object moving? Yes. Okay, thank you. And this test is for the temporal field, upward field, downward field, and to the nasal field of the eye of the client, which is to extend and move the arm of the examiner from the periphery. Repeat the above steps for the right eye. And proceed to the extraocular muscle test. Assist six ocular movements to determine eye alignment and coordination. Stand directly in front of the client and hold the pin light at a comfortable distance such as 30 cm in front of the client's eyes. Ask the client to hold the head in a fixed position facing you and follow the movements of the pen light with the eyes only. Move the pen light in a slow, orderly manner through the six cardinal fields of gaze. Stop the movement of the pen light periodically so that nystagmus can be de detected. So can you please fix your head and follow the pen light using only your eyes. Okay, sir, thank you. And after that, assess for location of light reflex by shining a pen light on the pupil and corneal surface of the eye of the client. Repeat the same thing on the other eye of the client. Next, have the client fixate on a near or far object. Cover one eye and observe for movement in the uncovered eye. This is what we call cover test. So sir, can you please cover your right eye? Do the same thing for the other eye. Sir, can you please cover again your left eye?
okay sir thank you and now to complete the assessment for the eye we need to assess visual acuity of the client's eyes assess near vision by providing adequate lighting and asking the client to read from a newspaper or a magazine sir can you please read what is written here physical examination thank you and assist distance vision by asking the client to wear corrective lenses unless they are used for reading only ask the client to sit or stand six meters or 20 feet from snellen's chart cover the eye not being tested and identify the letters or characters Take three readings, right eye, left eye, and both eye. Perform functional vision tests if the client is unable to see the top line of Snellen's chart. After the assessment or the procedure, document findings in the client's record. So now is the assessing the nose and sinuses of the client. Assessing the nose and sinuses is an inspection and palpation of the external nose structure and sinuses and inspection of patency of the nasal cavities so for assessing the nose and the sinuses first thing we do is to inquire if the client has any history of the following allergies difficulty of breathing through the nose sinuses infection injuries to nose or face nose bleeds any medication taken and any changes in sense of smell and we will need to position the client comfortably seated if possible so for the nose we will going to inspect the external nose for any deviation of shape size or color and flaring or discharge from the nariz so sir can you please take off your mask After that, we will going to lightly palpate the external nose to determine any areas of tenderness, masses, or displacements of bone and cartilage. So next, we will going to determine the patency of both nasal cavities. We're going to ask the client to close the mouth, exert pressure on one nariz, and breath through the other nariz. Repeat the procedure to assess patency of the both nariz. So sir, can you please close your mouth? And if I put pressure at the other side of your nostril, you will going to breath through the other part of your, or through the other nostril. So we will start on this side. And repeat the procedure to the other side. So now, we will going to inspect the nasal cavities using a flashlight or a nasal speculum. So assuming that this is our pen light or the flashlight, hold the speculum in your right hand and inspect the client's left nostril and in your left hand, inspect the client's right nostril tip the client's head back facing the client inspect the tip of the closed speculum about 1 cm or up to the point at which the blade widen care must be taken to avoid pressure on the sensitive nasal septum stabilize stabilize the speculum with your index finger against the side of the nose use the other hand to position the head and then hold the light and then hold the light open the speculum as much as possible to and inspect the floor of the nose the anterior portion of the septum and the middle metus the middle turb turbinates inspect the lining of the nerves and the integrity and the position of the nasal septum And 
now we will going to observe for the presence of redness, swelling, growth, and discharge. Inspect also for the nasal septum between the nasal chambers. And lastly, for the facial sinuses, palpate the maxilla maxillary and frontal sinuses for tenderness. After the procedure or the assessment, we will now go into document the findings in the client's record. Assessing the ears and hearing. Assessing the ears and hearing is an examination of the ear structure and determination of the client's hearing acuity, which consists of direct inspection, palpation of the ear, ear and techniques to assess auditory acuity and sound conduction. So, in this procedure, the first thing we do is to inquire if the client has any history of the following. Family history of hearing problem or loss, presence of any ear problem or pain, medication history, especially if there are complaints of hearing in ears, any hearing difficulty, its onset features contributing to it and how it interferes with activities of daily living, and use of corrective hearing device when and from it was started or obtain. So, position the client comfortably seated if possible. And for the auricles, we need to inspect the auricles for color, symmetry of size, and position. To inspect position, note the level of which the superior aspect of the auricle attaches to the head with relation to the eye. Palpate the auricle for texture, elasticity, and areas of tenderness. Gently pull the auricle upward, downward, and then backward. Fold the pinna forward, and it should be it should recoil. Push into the tragus and apply pressure to the moisture process. So, to assess external ear canal and tympanic membrane, use an otoscope, inspect the external ear canal for serum and skin lesions and pulse and blood. Inspect the tympanic membrane for color and gloss. And now, for the gross hearing acuity test, assess the client's response to normal voice tones. If the client has difficulty hearing the normal voice, proceed with the following test. Sir, did you hear me? Yes. Okay. So now, we will be going to perform the watch teeth test, wherein we need to use a wrist watch, watch in this test. Have the client occlude one ear. Out of the client's sight, place the taking watch 2 to 3 cm or 1 to 2 inches from the uncluded ear. As what the client can hear, repeat with the other ear. Sir, can you please cover your right ear? Okay. Now we're going to place the wrist watch at the other side of the ear of the client. Sir, did you hear something? Yes. What did you hear? 
creating a wedge. Okay. Now from the other, cover your other ear. Repeat the procedure on the next or the other ear of the client. Did you hear the same thing? Yes. Okay, thank you. You can down your arm. So, to perform river test, we need to hold the tanning of the fork at its base. Activate it by tapping the fork gently against the back of your hand near the knuckles or by stroking the fork between your thumb and your index finger. Place the base of the vibrating fork on the top of the client's head and ask whether the client hears the noise. So, for conducting rinse test, we need to ask the client to block the hearing in one ear intermittently by moving a, moving a fingertip in and out of the ear canal. Hold the handle of the activated tonic fork on the mastoid process of one ear until the client state that the vibration can no longer be heard. Immediately, hold still the vibrating fork prongs in front of the client's ear canal. So if necessary, push aside the client's hair and ask whether the client now hears the sound. After all the procedures that we or the assessment that we make for the ear of the client, we need to document the findings in the client's record. Assessing the mouth and the oropharynx. Assessing the mouth and the oropharynx is an inspection of the structures associated with eating and taste, which is composed of the lips, oral mucosa, tongue, floor of the mouth, teeth gums, hard and soft palate, ovula, salivary glands, tonsillar pillars, and tonsils. So, in this procedure, the first thing we do is to inquire if the client has any, any history of the following. Routine pattern on dental care, last visit to the dentist, length of time ulcers or other lesions have been present, any denture discomfort, any medications the client is receiving. And after that, you are going to position the client comfortably seated if possible. So first, we will going to assess the lips and buccal mucosa of the clients. Inspect the outer lips for symmetry of color, contour, and texture. Ask the client to pursue the lips as if they are whistling. So sir, can you please? First, show your lips. Okay, sorry, thank you. And next, inspect and palpate the inner lips and buccal mucosa for color, moisture, texture, and the presence of lesions. So, for the teeth and gums, inspect the teeth and gums while examining the inner lips and buccal mucosa of the client's mouth. And, inspect for the dentures. Ask the client to remove complete or partial dentures, inspect their condition, and nothing in particular broken. Now, for the thumb and or floor of the mouth, First thing we do is to inspect the surface of the tongue for position, color, and texture. Also, we were going to inspect the tongue movement. First, ask the client to protrude the tongue and to move from side to side and move also from upward to move it from the side and downward. So can you please move your tongue from side to side? Okay. After that, we will going also to inspect the base of the tongue, the mouth floor, and the frenulum. Ask the client to place the tip of the, his or her tongue against the roof of the mouth. 
to sir can you please place your tongue at the roof of your mouth okay sir thank you we will going also to palpate the tongue and the floor of the mouth for any noodles lumps or excreated areas use a piece of gauze pad to grasp the tip tip of the tongue with the index finger of the other hand palpate the back of the tongue its borders and its base so sir can you please open your mouth and let your tongue go outside Yes, sir, thank you. So, for the salivary glands, we will just going to inspect the salivary ducts opening for any swelling or redness. We will allow the patients to open their mouth. Sir, can you please open your mouth? And we, will, we can also use pen light, so assuming that this is our pen light. So for palate and ovula, we are going to inspect the hard and soft palate for shape, color, texture, and the presence of bony prominence. Ask the client to open the mouth well, while wide and tilt the head backward. Then, depress tongue with a tongue blades as necessary and use pen light for appropriate visualization. Sir, can you please open your mouth? Yes, sir. And also, we will going to inspect the ovula for positions and mobility while examining the palates. As to observe, ask the client to say ah uh, so that the soft palate rises. Sir, open your mouth, please. And can you please say ah? Uh? Ah. Uh. Okay, sir. Thank you. Now, for our pharynx and tonsils, we will going to inspect the our pharynx for color and texture. Inspect the one side at a time to avoid elicitating the gag reflexes. To expose one side of the our pharynx, press a tongue blade against the tongue on the same side about halfway back while the client tilt head back and open mouths wide. Also, use pen light for illumination if needed. So, sir, can you please open your mouth again? And inspect for tonsils for color, discharge, and the size. To complete the procedure, elicit the gag reflex by pressing the posterior tongue with a tongue blade and after all the procedure and assessment for the mouth and our pharynx of the client we will now document the findings in the client's record so for the last assessment which is the assessment of the neck assessing the neck is an examination for the neck muscles lymph nodes trachea thyroid gland cart carotid arteries and jugular veins so in this procedure we will going to inquire the client if he has any following of if he has any of the following any problem with neck lumps neck pain or stiffness when and how any lumps occurred any diagnosis of thyroid problems and any treatment such as surgery or radiation for the neck muscles we will going to inspect the neck muscles for abnormal swelling and masses, ask the client to hold the head erect. Next, we will going to observe head movement. Ask the client to move chin to the chest. In this way, we will going to ask the client to move head back 
so that the chin points upward. Move the head so that the ear is moved toward the shoulder on each side and turn hand to the left and to the right. So sir, can you move your head from up to down or to your chin? Again. And to your right. And to the left. Okay, thank you. So, to assess the muscle strength, we will go in to ask the client to turn head to one side against the resistance of your hand. Repeat with the other side. Also, shrug the shoulder against the resistance of your hands. So, sir, can you please move your head to the right and to the left? Can you also please shrug your shoulder? Okay. So, for the lymph nodes, we are going to palpate the entire neck for enlarged lymph nodes. And for the trachea, we are going to palpate trachea for lateral division. Place fingertip of your or your thumb on the trachea in the suprasternal notch. Then move your finger laterally to the left and your right finger in spaces bordered by the clavicle, the anterior aspect of the sternomastoid muscle and the trachea. So, for thyroid gland, we are going to inspect it and we should always stand in front of the client. Observe the lower neck of the overlying and the thyroid gland for symmetry and visible masses. Ask the client to hyperextend the head and swallow. If necessary, offer a glass of water to make it easier for the client to swallow. Sir, can you please swallow? Okay, sir, thank you. So, after that, we will go in to palpate the thyroid gland for a tool smoothness. Note any areas of enlargement, masses, or noodles. If enlargement is suspected, auscultate over the thyroid area for a broth and use the bell shape diaphragm of the stethoscope after the procedure or the assessment we will going now to document the findings of the client in the client's record